Welcome back to this video series titled, Is the Pill Wrecking Your Gut? I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and I just did a video on birth control pills and gut dysbiosis where I talked about the importance of the microbiome and how metabolic diseases like thyroid disease and heart disease and diabetes and obesity, mental health disorders are tied into the gut microbiome. I talked about several ways uh, that the pill and other methods of oral contraceptives cause disruption to not only the gut microflora, but also the vaginal flora leading to things like yeast and bacterial infections. I showed testing that I use in practice that helped me understand how to best support the gut microbiome and improve gut health. I talked about chemical sensitivities and how changes in the gut microbiome and gut dysbiosis can change and alter one's immune system to lose tolerance and to overreact to not only healthy foods, but also the chemicals in the environment, things like shampoos and perfumes and plastics. Today's video, I want to spend some time talking about how the birth control pill and other forms of synthetic hormones, like those found in IUDs and fertility shots, can raise levels of inflammation throughout the gastrointestinal tract. Now, this is especially important if you have chronic diarrhea, if you have a leaky gut, if you suffer with anxiety, depression, if you have thyroid disease, or if you have brain fog or joint pain, or really any other chronic health problem where we know that inflammation is a key player, right? Now here is something I wanna share with you and something that I think and I wish more people knew about. Um, this is one of the largest studies. It was done by Harvard researchers and what they did is they looked at the health records of over 230,000 women. And what they found was that women who took the birth control pill for five years or more tripled the chance of developing Crohn's disease. Now I'll say that again, just in case you missed it women who took the pill for five or more years tripled the chances of developing Crohn's disease. Now, I work with a lot of patients who have Crohn's disease and other kinds of inflammatory bowel diseases. And I will tell you that it can be a horrific and debilitating gastrointestinal disorder, which sometimes can be life-threatening. On one end, you have bloody diarrhea, which causes this continuous state of anemia, low iron levels, low oxygen in your body. You have abdominal pain, you have joint pain, you have ulcers in your mouth, you can't gain weight no matter what you do, so you're underweight, you're malnourished, you have nausea, you have fevers that come and go, you develop fissures in your rectum, you're always planning, you're always planning your life around the nearest bathroom, and that's just on the most superficial level, right? It's absolutely terrible. And if we just stop there for just a moment, and we, we, we dissect that a little bit, while you heard me say that women who take birth control pills for five years or more tripled the chances of developing Crohn's disease, what you didn't pick up on perhaps was that Crohn's disease is an autoimmune disease, right? And that's really what it is. That's what Crohn's disease is. It's an autoimmune disorder. And Crohn's disease happens when the body's immune system attacks the lining of the digestive tract, causing it to become inflamed. And when it becomes inflamed, not only do you experience all those symptoms that I just mentioned, but what if I told you that intestinal inflammation has now been linked to Alzheimer's disease, it's been linked to Parkinson's disease, it's been linked to other kinds of neurodegenerative diseases? Would that surprise you? Would that make you think differently about the pill that you might be taking today and what the consequences of that may be down the road? If the pill can cause inflammation in the gut and gut inflammation has been tied into Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and dementia, do you think it's possible that in, at the age of maybe early 20s or 30s, that it could also be causing your brain fog or your depression or your headaches or the anxiety that you might be experiencing? Maybe the problem's not in your head after all. Perhaps the problem's in your gut. And when there's a saying that we have that when there's fire in the gut, there's fire in the brain, right? If you take a look at this study that came out in 2016 titled The Risk of Inflammatory Bowel Disease with oral contraceptives and menopausal hormone therapy. This is one of the many studies that show that the pill and other forms of unnatural hormone replacement, similar to those found in women who take HRT or fertility shots, how it induces changes to the microbiome. All right, we talked about that in the first video. We talked about how, this, how the pill causes gut dysbiosis. Well, we know HRT also causes gut dysbiosis. Number two is we know that it creates an inflammatory environment in the gut and third, we know that it increases gut permeability, right? In other words, it causes a leaky gut. And these changes alter the immune system and polarize the immune system towards autoimmunity. And in this particular case, towards Crohn's disease and towards ulcerative colitis. 
And this is a really bad thing. You see, inflammation in the gut creates total havoc on the body. Now let me show you an example of this inflammation on a test that was run by a patient of mine. This patient had a feeling that her bowels would never empty. She would experience uh, constipation, and the next day she'd have diarrhea, but she always felt like there was something there. She would pass large amounts of foul-smelling gas. It was very embarrassing. Uh, emotionally, it affected her. It affected her sex life with her husband. She experienced excessive belching and burping and bloating. Right? She had difficulty digesting fruits and vegetables. She was fatigued almost constantly. She had very low levels of vitamin D. She was low in vitamin E. She had low vitamin A levels. And on further investigation, I discovered that she also had an autoimmune disease of the thyroid, right? She had Hashimoto's disease, which is something I see very often. I would probably estimate uh, that about 60 to 70% of my IBS and IBD patients also have thyroid problems. So not only did she have all these GI symptoms, she had a normal colonoscopy, she had a normal endoscopy. So our doctors were not really interested in trying to understand really what was wrong with her. Well, this marker that you see here, this is a marker called fecal calprotectin. And you see where it says the normal is less than 50. And here you can see that her result was 1404. I show you this because this marker is seven times the upper limit. Fecal calprotectin indicates the migration of certain kinds of white blood cells called neutrophils into the intestinal mucosa, which occurs during intestinal inflammation. You also notice that where it says here that levels greater than 200 indicate that further investigation is needed. Now this can be a pretty serious problem and something that shouldn't be taken lightly. So as I wrap up today's video, there's a few reminders and takeaways that I want you to remember. Okay, number one is that the pill can cause inflammation in the gut. And when we have inflammation in the gut, this inflammation is very damaging to the brain and neural tissue. Right? This again is where we see many problems between the brain and the gut. This is where again the depression link comes in, the anxiety link comes in, chronic headaches, restless leg, changes in cognitive function, visual problems, insomnia, etc. Right? Number two is that the pill can cause leaky gut and this leaky gut can set the stage for autoimmune diseases. It can set the stage for Hashimoto's thyroid disease. It can set the stage for type 1 diabetes and metabolic syndrome, heart disease, and other kinds of autoimmune diseases. Now, number three is if you need help, okay, I encourage you to visit my website and in the upper corner of the web of the, of the page, you're going to see a button where it says start here. If you click on that tab, you'll be taken to a questionnaire where you can tell us a little bit more about yourself perhaps what you're struggling with, what you need the most help with. And within about 20 or 30 minutes of submitting that questionnaire, I'll send you a recommendation on what I recommend you do from a starting point. If you're not getting answers, perhaps you need a set of fresh eyes looking at your case. Someone who perhaps might look at and understand the bigger picture of what's going on. I hope that you'll tune in to the next video where I'll be talking more about how the pill is connected to leaky gut. I'll talk about testing for the leaky gut and the different kinds of leaky gut that uh, many people aren't aware of, don't realize. Uh, they think just a leaky gut is just a leaky gut, uh, but in actuality, depending on the kind of leaky gut you have, you'll need to address it differently, right? You won't want to miss that, all right? So until next time, we'll see you then.